I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 300, where I'm going to show you how to aggregate indirectly related matrices using the multidimensional magic or power of Quantrix Modeler. I absolutely love this tool, and I'll demonstrate that here in just a minute. But before I get into this, I wanted to thank all of my subscribers, my likers, and all of those that have ever given me a question to answer here on YouTube. I've sincerely appreciated it, and I sincerely appreciate the encouragement and the support you've given to my Quantrix Authority YouTube channel over the past 300 episodes. It's been awesome, and I've absolutely loved it. I hope that you found it of benefit as well. One request that I have of you is for the first 20 or so people that write in, at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com and just share with me your favorite episode or something that's been of benefit to you. Uh, I would really appreciate knowing that. And if you go ahead and write in at my QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com and send me your address, I would also like to send you uh, something in the mail in a token of appreciation. So again, that goes for the first 20 or so people that write into me uh, by the end of uh, December uh, 2019. I'll go ahead and send you something in the mail. And if you live overseas, I will try to send it to you overseas as well. So uh, that's out there for you. But I would just love to hear how Quantrix Authority has benefited, benefited you. And if you have a favorite episode or you'd like to know more about a certain topic, please, please just send that in the email. I think that will make my day to hear from some of the people in the Quantrix community. And just as a little fun fact, I think episode number 14 is probably my favorite. I think it's the Quantrix Giggles because, you know, it just really demonstrates the power of Quantrix. I review some of that there. Anyway, let's get on to the podcast and the material. How do I aggregate indirectly related matrices? What I mean by this is I have a model that has a boatload of data by city, by year, and I have actual and forecast data for some of my favorite places in the world. And these cities are associated with a region. And I want to aggregate by region the forecast that I have listed over here in my data matrix. And you can see that I have years linked between the two matrices, but I do not have region over here in my data, nor can I have it. Uh, I realize I could maybe add a helper cell and maybe in another episode I'll show you how to do that. But say this model is extremely large and I don't want to add a, another helper cell and increase by, you know, one third the size of this data matrix. How can I go ahead then and aggregate at the region level these cities and their values? Well, I would have to use uh, a select statement functionality within Quantrix, probably also with a select list. So let's go to it. And I think it's just awesome how it works. So I'm going to say my solution, because that is my item, and item in category K is equal to the sum select list. And the reason why I'm going to use select list is because I want it to look up multiple values uh, here. I wanted to look up multiple cities that are associated with the regions here. For example, Region 1, Oak City, and Tabletop are part of it. Region 2 has Fool Creek and Harkiv. So I want to make sure that I'm looking up all of those items uh, within that fall into that list, that fall into that region, into the specific region that is listed here. Okay, so I'm going to select list, and what is the value that I that I want to return. I want to return my data forecast. And what is my key list? My key list is going to be my city here. So I'm going to put at data and I'm going to put city. And what is my lookup value list? Well, I want to return any cities that are associated with the region that I'm at here. So I'm going to say select 
because I'm doing my lookup value list here. And I want to select my value list, which is going to be my region here. And my key list is going to be at city here. That is what I want to return, the cities. And my key list is going to be my region here. And the region I want to look up is the region that I'm on. Okay, So if I go ahead and I close that, I'm going to expect to get probably an error here. If I go add data city, that's interesting. I need to actually add another colon there. I'm probably going to get a pound size error here, but we'll get to that in just a second. If I go down here and look at my dependency inspector, I want to look at this last select and make sure that I'm selecting correctly. That if I'm on region one, uh, I go over here in my city to region matrix and I see that I have Oak City and Tabletop coming through. So if I go over here and I look at that select, indeed I have Oak City and Tabletop coming through. If I were to go here to region three, I would expect to see Henry and South Walker in my list. And indeed, that is what I'm seeing because Region 3 is Henry, uh, Region 3 is also South Walker. So it looks like that is working, but why do I have a size error? So in order to kind of evaluate that, I look at this uh, array here of my lookup values in my select list, and I can see that I have 84 items. But then here down here in, in uh, my data for my city, I only have seven items. And what is happening is, I have multiple months going across uh, my data matrix, and then I'm aggregating it back down here at the year le level here within my region summary. So what I could do if I needed to is I could simply drag, not year, but I could drag month here, okay? And if I drag month into here, then that select list uh, and this select works beautifully. And what I mean by that is for 2023, for month nine, or for month one of 2023, for region one, region one has Oak City and Tabletop in it. If I were to sum Oak City and Tabletop for 2029, I would get 57.2. And I don't know where I'm going with my numbers here, but for 2024, sorry, I think this nine was throwing me off there. But if I were to sum 2024's values for Oak City and Tabletop, you can see that I have 57.2. And indeed, that is what I have right here, is I have 57.2. If I were to go over to month two, I would expect to see 80.3. And that is what I'm seeing. Again, I don't have region that's living out here. I only have my city that's living out here, but it's mapped with another matrix to the region. And I can use the multi-dimensional modeling magic of Quantrix Modeler and with the select list and the select functions in order to perform my aggregate. If I wanted to see this summarized not at the month level, and I wanted to go back and see it summarized at the year level, well, maybe come back to episode number 301, and I'm going to show you how you would do that. But in the interim, please just enjoy the multi-dimensional modeling power of Quantrix Modeler. And again, I sincerely appreciate you joining me for episode number 300. And if you have any questions about Quantrix, for 300 episodes now, I've offered you this free service, and it will continue to be free. So continue to ask me your questions at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com. Really, I love this software, and I want the whole world to run on Quantrix. And I really want to make you a Quantrix master. So please join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez. Today's podcast is brought to you by QuantrixAuthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.